Okay, hi there again, class. This is Marilise Garal, your instructor for art appreciation, and we are on uh, our next lecture for the first week of October. That's on the fields of the different fields of art, and um, la the objective for this uh, lecture is to discuss the different fields of art and tackle a little bit about their elements and um, principles, and also to distinguish the difference between the works of an artist and artisan. So first, let us review. We have discussed the details of the uh, Philippine uh, of art history and how it has evolved from the past, the historical past until the present, and how this uh, work of art or masterpieces impact the lives of the people and the whole nation as well. OK, so we have here the first field of art the painting and the uh, painting is uh, the practice of applying a medium over a solid surface the medium could be oil watercolor acrylic and other pigments some other people would usually use like coffee the pigment of a flower and um, anything that could color and ink also could be considered one and uh, any other colorful things are uh, that could be used for coloring any color stuff that could be used for coloring so i am sure you are very much um, familiar with uh, several paintings but we will uh, discuss that later on in other class so first let me let's have the six elements basic elements for painting under painting we have the color we have the tone we have the line shape Taste and texture, and when you say color, we have just discussed the meaning of a pigment and tone, the, um, how the, the the elements are being put together and create um, a very uh, harmonious relationship with each other, or uh, the composition is good. That's the tone, the lines, of course. Uh, when you make some drawings or sketches, you want for the appearance that because it is the first part of uh, doing a painting. But some artists would usually start with the color itself, but most of the artists do some lines first on their canvas. And when you say shape, shape that would be, of course, the, the, the shapes, the shape, the things of the shapes that you put on your, your canvas and uh, space. Would be the, the the spacing, the spaces, the spaces itself in between the subjects in your canvas or material, and a texture would go for the brush strokes. But further discussion about it, um, the definitions and meanings of these elements will go later on. And then we have the basic principles for painting. We have the balance. We have the proportion and scale. We have the contrast, repetition, and pattern unity and harmony. Okay, we have discussed in the past that when we say basic principles, when we say principle, these are the guiding uh, guiding steps or guiding procedures in making your 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 artwork. Do, these are the things that you consider in making your artwork. So in your painting you have to consider balance. Balance that means is there in how are you going to paint, for example, a flower? Okay, you have to consider the background of the flower, the subject itself, and all these things. The colors also are closely uh, considered. Proportion and scale would be like your canvas. Is your canvas too big for the subject, or is your subject too big for the canvas? All of these things. Or it could also be subject to subject, like uh, the material. The, the stuff that we have inside your canvas are they proportionate with each other? Is one subject very big or large compared to the other parts of um, the stuff inside your canvas? And contrast with pertaining to the colors, uh, like is it too strong? Like the color, your color combination should be at least smooth. Uh, the gradual, uh, the gradual changes in your your colors when you paint should be smooth and the application of pattern would be is it um, like the lines the shapes do you have the same uh, 
happen all the time when you create your strategy and thinking. And of course, you need and harmony will be the composition of the, the whole thing. Okay, so again, those are the principles for uh, thinking. And next one, we have the sculpture. Okay, let's define sculpture. Sculpture is the branch of special arts that operates in three dimensions. It is one of the plastic arts. Everybody is, uh, of course, familiar with sculpture. We have many makers also. We have big sculptures. Big sculptures are the uh, monumental ones, just like uh, the, sculpt the monuments of Rizal in Manila. And then sculpture would be like, we have a lot of sculptures. You know how you have the pottery, that's one of the uh, sculptures. Uh, sculptures could also be the relief on the churches. We have discussed it during our discussion on the history of the art. And then there are a lot. Even in, you can see these sculptures anywhere in your life and in your place. And then the basic elements for sculpture are the volume, surface, light, and shade and color. Of course, when you do something, when you, you do some art, the colors, or the, the shape, or the shades. So you have to consider all these things. And when it comes to the sculpture, volume means the height, the length, and the thickness of your material. These are the things that you have to consider. Surface would also pertain to the, how smooth, okay, how smooth your, your sculptures are. And then the basic principles for sculptures would be orientation, proportion, and scale articulation and balance of that. Again, balance is there. Because a, stru uh, a sculpture is a structure. Okay, uh, orientation, that means if it's a sculpture, where do you have to point the head of this subject matter? For example, your subject matter is uh, sculpting a uh, human being or man. So where is the orientation to the north to the south of the stems to make a balance? And proportion, that means is the head proportionate to the body is it distorted or something like this? Articulation that means uh, the full design that you put on your uh, sculptures or monuments. Okay, next one we have the architecture. Okay, when you say architecture, it is the art and technique of designing building. We have discussed uh, in the past that uh, the, the ancient sculptures are the Bahai Kubo, the Bahai and uh, Bato, and now we have the buildings and condominiums all over the world so it is distinguished from skills associated with construction that's the meaning of architecture and um uh, architecture is also employed to fulfill both practical and expressive requirements and thus it serves both utilitarian and aesthetic things. so architecture is being utilized it is structured because it, it is used as it a function and also the aesthetic aspect is uh, should never be forget when you create a building uh, there should also be a design that is appropriate so uh, they are put together the, uh, the use and the beauty are together in an architecture architectural piece so the basic elements of architecture are the points the line the plane and the volume again volume is there similar to sculpture the point of of course, it's where you start building. So that will be your point. Lines can never be forgotten from making uh, architecture. Why? Because um, you almost, when you make even just the blueprints of your building, are already made of lines. How do you place your lines? And the planes are also included in making your lines. So the point, uh, lines and planes together, when you place your blueprints, Prints are already there, the point is there, the volume is there, and uh, these are made into a printing uh, thing. Now we have the basic principles for architecture. Again, we have the balance, and then the rhythm and emphasis, proportion and scale. Again, there, the movement, contrast, and utility. These principles will be further um, explained in the next uh, present, in my next presentation. So the fourth one is literature. Literature is defined as books, journals, letters, and any form of communication. Other written works, especially those deserve them, creative or artistic merit, are valued as literature. 
And then the basic elements for literature are the plot in character, point of view, and setting. You know, this is that we're familiar with this one because these are the elements found in your short stories and novels. So you have your theme, you have your plot, your character, your antagonist, and protagonist, point of view. And the point of view could be the point of view of the reader, point of view of the writer, or in different points of uh, perspective, could be the point of view. And um, setting, of course, when you make a story, there's always a setting. And then we have the basic principles. Okay, for literature, uh, there are a lot of literatures. Um, we all know that literature has two basic types, the prose and the poetry. So basically, when you try to consider the guiding principles of this architect uh, of this literature, then you have to consider the, um, the what kind of genre. So there are different principles in every genre. But I just wanted to take note of this one. The underlying principles by which we attempt to understand literature is depending on what kind of literature do you make. For example, when you create a drama, so the state the director is characteristic of the director is considered, the the director is considered the characteristic of the actors and actresses so there, the stage designs are considered the costumes, the makeup, the lighting and the sounds and all of these things. So it differs from uh, from the principles of making some some uh, maybe comedy or a stage play or musical and opera. And if you want to have the music, music is a form of art. It uses sound organized in time. It uses uh, people singing with their vo uh, voices or playing musical instruments. The word music comes from the Greek word mosaic, which means art of the music. Okay, so I hope that's clear with you. Everybody experiences music, we can sing, we hear a lot of music around. And the basic elements for music, of course, is sounds. Okay, when you say sound, it's the overtone, timbre, pitch, amplitude, and duration. And then we have the melody. Of course, um, you'll never forget harmony. The rhythm is also there, the texture, and then the structure or the form of the music. Expression is also there. Expression means uh, the dynamic, the tempo, and articulation of the music. And then when we say principles of the music, we have the composition, we have the form, we have the genre, we have the harmony, rhythm, and texture. Okay, the next one, we have the dance. Dance is the movement of the body in a rhythmic way, usually to music and within a given space. Created for the purpose of expressing an idea or emotion, releasing energy. Just like the other forms of art, then um, like painting, architecture, it's also expressions of ideas and it's a release of energy that we have with it. Or simply taking the light in the movement itself. Okay. So you, you know dance very well. I don't know if you go far with that. And these are the elements for dance. General or personal space, level, size, direction, pathway, focus, and time. And the great, uh, basic principle guiding uh, dance would be jumping, turning, gestures. So well, these four basic uh, principles are just uh, basic, very basic. But of course, there are different genres in, uh, in dance. There are different types of dance, classifications of dances. So that means the guiding principle would be uh, would vary from one genre to another, or from one type to another. And then we have the drama and theater. Drama means composition, normally films, telling a story, and intended to be presented by actors impersonating the characters and speaking in. Dialogue. So we are not. We are, this is very popular, and uh, we're not naive about it. About this one. So we also have the play means activity for amusement, and especially among artists on stage, like doing acts on theaters. So for theaters, we have the musical and opera. And then the basic elements for uh, this drama and theaters: the literary, the literary is itself, the technical, technical that is on. The stage, the the, the 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 designs of the stage, the makeup of the artists, the clothes that they use, the sounds, the music, 
And then performance elements would be, of course, it uh, pertains to the acting, the actors and actresses there acting, okay, and how 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 expressive these actors and actresses are, actors are. And then we have the basic principles for this one. There must be a character, force, and a conflict in that um, play. So that means that creates a better uh, Okay, we have last the film and cinema theater where movies are shown for public entertainment. A movie theater are usually founded on a stage play, novels and stories. So usually uh, all of these movies that we have are uh, literally founded or they are written first. So there's the script before it turns out to be a um, film or cinema. Okay, now let's uh, let me look into the differences between arts and artisan. The distinction between arts and artisan. Artists work in the fine arts, including painting, illustration, uh, sculpture. Artisans are craftsmen who work in textiles, pottery, glass, and other areas. These two artistic careers are compared below with some salary and education information. Well, anyway, uh, when you say artist, these are most probably the the, the products, their products are painting, sculptures, illustrations, and anything that's a little bit entertaining and amusing. While our reasons are more on the domestic side, that has its domestic aspects. So most of the crafts of these artisans are related to uh, domestic chores. It could be um, like the textile, the pottery, the glass making, and all these things. And then, of course, now we're done with uh, each field of art. The next one we will be focusing on. The elements and how these elements uh, impact the product or the art itself and also we will be talking about principles we will be uh, finding how these principles impact uh, physiognomy and uh, how do we find the elements and and um, principles in a particular art so mabuhay tayong lahat that i will never forget our activity my scoring rubric would still be the same the technical aspect of the paper would still be the same. I have here a question for your activity uh, relative to this discussion. We have to be which among the field of art awakens your interest? Okay, which among the fields of art awakens your interest? This one, why? Explain your answer and support this with your personal experiences. Okay, so that's your activity, but this one is your assignment. This one I'm going to discuss a little bit because I will also be doing your project today. They are assigned to choose one master uh, piece from any field which you think define your character. So this one is which field of art and your assignment would be choose one master piece from any field which you think define your character. And why do you like this art piece define you? I do like, uh, do you think this artist defines you? Include your picture or image of this artist that defines you. Again, I have the same scoring rubric and uh, technical aspect. Okay, I have here my references. And of course, I will never forget my uh, good price line. You don't make mistakes, just happy little accident. So, according to Bob Rose, a painter. Thank you very much. Uh, please work on your uh, assignment and uh, project will come soon. I love you very much. Very much. God bless everyone. Have a nice day.